Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny. To all of my returning subscribers, hey, how you doing? And for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome, kick your feet up, subscribe to this family-friendly channel, and don't forget to click the notification bell so you don't miss any posts. Also follow me on Instagram at the same profile name so you don't miss the sneak peeks of what's coming up next. In this video, it's Queen Sugar, season five, episode five, entitled May 19th, 2020. I give a recap of the entire episode with photos offset to the side, and then I give my review at the end. No need to dig around. I have all of the minute marks in the comments. It's all coming up next. It's such a calm and peaceful morning that Darla and Ralph Angel share. They're talking about how they're excited for their up and coming wedding and how all they want is happiness. Darla does express that her mom was offended that she didn't have enough time to fly down and see them get married on their special day. And Ralph Angel says that he's sure that of course every parent wants to see their child walk down the aisle. So just understand her frustration and Darla says, yeah, I'm sure as a mom, she understands that it's all about our happiness getting closer. And she's really looking forward to meeting more with Charlie and Nova. And she really admires and looks up to Charlie. So she's excited about that. Darla and Ralph Angel, later that afternoon, they speak with Blue to see how he feels about this wedding thing. And as a kid, he's saying that he's super excited and he's just so happy. Darla expresses that, you know what? I need four things from you on this special day. Do you know what they are? Blue's just like, well, no, not really. So they laugh and she says, well, a bride needs something old, something new, something borrowed, and something blue. But that's you. I have you. You are my blue. And he's super excited and saying, I am blue, aren't I? <laughs> Vi has a moment to catch up with Hollywood. And Vi says, what they think I got extra cakes just laying around? And I'm now I'm rushing trying to get this cake ready and then they got the nerve to say, we all got to wear yellow. Like, how you going to have a last minute wedding and you wearing yellow? Like, hey, you want me to make a cake? So she's laughing. But we can tell that Hollywood is in his morning state. And he says, wow, they get married today. I just, I can't make it and I feel so bad. It's just so much going on. And my mother deserved a proper burial. And it's just so hard for him because he's getting her things squared away. We see the boxes and the vehicle that he's in. And he's saying, my mama deserved a proper funeral to be around everybody who loved her and them showing up and being there. And I says, you know, life isn't about people showing up. Your mother showed up for you, your sister, your family, and people who loved her. And the Lord has received her. And I'm sure that when they met, God told her, well done. Hollywood says, you know what, you're right. And Vi reminds him that the most important thing is that he take his time. And everybody is really understanding about his situation and his loss. And not feel like he's missing something or that he's skipping out. There's a legitimate reason he's lost his mom. And Hollywood says, you're right. And we just see the sadness. And Hollywood is just taking his moments to mourn his mom. Nova is looking at old childhood photos and just reminiscing about her brother and saying, wow, like he's getting married. And then she says, unfortunately, I haven't made it easy for Nova, but they deserve to be happy. And wow, I just felt like life was just so much easier when mom and dad were here. It's just hard. And Calvin reminds her that you have a really good family. And just like every other family, there's going to be some ups and downs. And all that she can do is just be there for them in the future and always playing her part. Ralph Angel is so excited and he's building items for their special day. And he even says, man, I wonder if we can ask one of the neighbors and have Blue go down there and he can get some nice flowers and we can just put them everywhere. And Darla is saying, that's great, but everything that you build and do you feel like you'll have enough time? And Ralph is a man on a mission. He says, oh yeah, it's gonna get done. I have all of these ideas and it's gonna be finished. 
She's like, well, okay. In that case, I also have some fabric that'll look really nice and we can put it all around. We could just have this nice ambiance. And Ralph says, whatever you think will look nice, I'm sure will be perfect. And even Blue is excited because all the way across the house, he's saying, mom, do you think this will look good? And what about this? Darla's like, well, let me go check on him. Darla goes to another room and it's Charlie and she's trying to show her on the computer hey you know I want you to check out these tables and chairs for rent you know they look really nice and Darla insists like oh no like everything that we have will make do and it'd be just fine and Charlie's like no 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 just because it's a same day wedding doesn't mean that we can't judge it up a little bit so why don't you come take a look Carla says, okay. She goes around to the computer and on the screen, surprise, it's her mom, Vi, and Nova. And they surprise her with a virtual bride party and bachelorette party. They are so happy for her. Charlie is mounting her with the special day crown. And Vi's just joking, saying, well, you know, we don't have any strippers for a bachelorette party, but I got it paused on the best parts of Magic Mike, you want to see? And everybody's like, no, 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 stop, 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 stop. <laughs> Please don't play that. She's just kidding, but she wants to tell her congratulations. And she's so happy for her. Her mother's happy. Nova's excited. And they're just expressing that we just want you to be happy. And Nova says, you know, you're going to have the borderline name soon. But overall, everything, you're going to be our sister. And just, just welcome. And we love you so much. And Darla is just telling everybody, thank you, thank you. This is, this is just amazing. And you know what? Mama, I'm sorry that her, but her mom cuts her off. And her mom's name is Darlene. And she says, you know what? Don't think about anything else but you today. And your special virtual party. You know, this pandemic has taught me so much. It's taught me just to live in the moment. And not to live for others. By the way, how's Blue doing? And she expresses that he's amazing and just taking everything that's going on pretty well for a nine-year-old. And she wants to know, well, what's up with school? And Darla shares that, you know what, I had him tested for his IQ because everything in school, he's just exceeding and excelling so well. And Vi's just like, mm, well, you know, I got a PhD in common sense, honey. <laughs> and her mom is just like, well, you know, he did get some smarts from me. Don't cut me out. Hollywood takes a moment to call Ralph Angel. And Ralph says, I'm glad that you called, man, and you didn't even have to do that. And Hollywood says, I just wanted to tell you that I really, really wanted to be there. You know what? My mama wanted to be cremated, and that was hard for me. I spread her ashes, you know, on this boat at this lake where we used to go fishing. And it was like the water was so still. It was like it was waiting for her. Ralph says, you know, take it one day at a time. No matter what, you're still my best man. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about making it. You just take your time. And Hollywood says, I love you, man. I, I love you all. And I just wanted to call and tell you congratulations. And I'm just so happy for y'all. Ralph says, you know what? I love you too. You take your time. They get off the phone and it's still very emotionally obvious that Hollywood is mourning his mother and just taking moments of deep thought. Charlie is joking around with her brother and saying, wow, you know what? Just wait until this pandemic stuff is over and the ladies are going to have an amazing bachelorette party. I mean, can you say Vegas? I mean, it's going to be the best anyone has ever seen. And Ralph is like, no, no, <laughs> you are not taking my lady to do nothing crazy. And they just share a moment to just laugh and just giggle a little bit. And Ralph is saying, you know, it's just so sad, Hollywood, and losing his mom. I'm sad he can't make it. I don't have a best man, but, you know, he's still my best man. Charlie's like, you know what? Ask Micah. I mean, he adores you, and you guys are pretty much like brothers. Ralph says, you know what? That's a good idea. 
Then they start talking about childhood and how they used to race with one another. And Charlie says, you know, I used to beat you all the time. So they get to trash talking. And Charlie's like, do we need to take this outside now? Because, I mean, we can race. We then see them outside. They are ready to throw down, honey. And Charlie's just like, I'm getting ready to beat you. So after I beat you, you know, don't feel bad. And Ralph Ainge is just like, you know what? Why don't you call it? And in the midst of him talking, Charlie just takes off. And Ralph's like, wait, no, what are you doing? Hey, you cheated. Charlie's laughing and running. She was like, no excuses. Come on. They're running, running. Ralph Angel catches up with her and says, look. You did all that cheating, and you still lost. And they're laughing, and they're trying to catch their breath. And they take a moment just realizing that, wow, we're having fun, just like we used to do when we were kids. Charlie looks him in the eyes and says, I love you, and I'm so proud of you. And it's this moment of understanding and thinking about, thinking about when they had rough times and static. But in that moment, they loved one another and they cared for one another. And it just seemed like everything in the past just melted away. And Ralph Angel says, I love you too, Charlie. Charlie and Micah take a moment to assess what they have in the closet because they got to wear yellow and they're trying to look nice. And Charlie's like, wait a minute, that's that's not yellow. Micah's like, look, this is the lightest thing that I have. That's clean, that's nice. You know, I was coming from school and I just grabbed as much as I could. Charlie's like, yeah, you know, you're right. I mean, I don't know if I have anything yellow either. I mean, unfortunately, I might have to wear something lighter as well. Hmm. Micah's like, you know what? You can wear a white dress. Charlie's like, no, let me school you real quick. The only person that's supposed to wear white is the bride, okay? And it's really rude if you do that because it's their special day. And then Micah says, you know, same day wedding, it's pretty cool. I mean, I get to be the best man, but what am I supposed to do? I mean, say. And Charlie explains that, you know, the groom is going to be nervous. So just try to be there and be supportive and have a little fun. You know, your dad was nervous too. And that's probably because I was half an hour late. I had some cold feet, but things got better and we made it happen. She pulls something out the closet and says, "Ooh, how's this? Micah says, um, well, it's yellow. <laughs> Throwing some kind of shade and saying, It'll work. But Charlie gets the joke and tells him, well, I guess that I have to do. It's yellow and I want to look my best. Blue and Ralph Angel talk. And Blue's just like, are you nervous? And Ralph Angel clarifies that I'm nervous, but not nervous about marrying your mama. I mean, I'm thinking about, you know, if everything's going to look right and is everybody going to do what they're supposed to do. But I'm not nervous about anything else. I love you, okay? Blue says, I love you too, Dad. <laughs> Micah arrives and says, hey, everybody, you all look nice. And they compliment each other on how good they look. And Ralph Angel's just like, so, the ring? Micah's like, ring? Uh, what ring? I thought that you, and it's obvious that Ralph is getting kind of frustrated, but trying to hold his composure. And <laughs> Micah says, I'm kidding. The ring is right here. Loosen up, man. You're nervous. Chill for a second. Charlie gives a nice knock, knock. She walks in and Darla doesn't respond. She's in deep thought or prayer. Charlie says, are you okay? Darla takes a beat and she says, you know, I never thought this day would come. I mean, we thought about it, we planned, and all of a sudden it, it's here. Charlie says, you know, are you, are, are you having any doubts? Darla says, no, I just, I gave him so many reasons for him not to love me. Charlie holds her hand and says, but yet he does. He loves you. Everything is in the past and he wants to move forward with you, a family. Look, enough of that. <laughs> Nova sent me over to send something old. Darla says, wow, it's, it's from Ralph's mom. And it's a journal page of her while she was pregnant with Ralph. And then when he was a baby. 
as she's writing down thoughts and prayers that he finds the love that will be like her and her husband. Darla says, wow, that's me. I'm that love she prayed for. Charlie says, yes. Yeah, you are. Vi speaks with Nova and Calvin and says, wow. Ralph looks so handsome and everything looks so beautiful. I'm so happy for him. Oh, this sight takes my breath away. Nova says, yes, indeed. It's just so amazing. <sighs> they just look so beautiful. And he doesn't look half bad either. Vi turns around and it's Hollywood. And Hollywood tells Vi, you got to keep living, right? And Vi is so excited to see him and she can do nothing but hug and embrace her husband. Ralph Angel and Hollywood lock eyes and Ralph gives a gesture of thank you. Ralph Angel says to Nova, hey, how about we play those tunes? And she starts a song on her cell phone and we see Blue start to walk down the aisle with the rings in which he then hands off to Micah. Charlie comes down the aisle looking so beautiful in her dress. And as she's walking down the aisle, she gives the eye contact with Hollywood, like a nonverbal, oh, hey, in her eyes. And he waves and she's so excited to see him and everybody else. She gets down closer towards the end of the aisle and here she comes. Then Darla. We see her face, which is an absolute beauty. And everyone using their eyes looks at her in awe. What makes the scene so beautiful is that as she's walking down the aisle, she's connecting with everyone via eye contact, mouthing, I love you, to each person as she walks down the aisle. Everyone is bowing their heads and nodding to her and shaking their heads because she's just so beautiful. The person administering the wedding ceremony starts off with one of Maya Angelou's passages about how only love will set one free and how only love will set one free. And who gives this woman a way to be wed? And her mom virtually says, I do. And it brings everybody a laugh. And Darla and Ralph, everybody's just so excited that her mom could see this special day. Then they share their own vows. Ralph Angel expresses that not being with Darla wasn't an option. He knew that they would share something special the first time he saw her. And today was his dream, that Darla was his sun, his moon, his light, and that she makes him a better man. And he wants to be the best person for her, for Blue, and for everyone. Darla expresses that when you first held my hand, it was this light, gentle, strong love. And all I wanted to do was just feel that forever. You picked me up when I couldn't do it myself. You helped me shine. And I want to shine with you. Now it's time for the rings. And the person says, do you, Ralph Angel, take Darla to be your lawfully wedded wife? To have, to hold, to cherish until death do you part? And Ralph Angel says with a smile, I do. It's the same thing to Darla. Do you, Darla, take Ralph Angel to be your lawfully wedded husband, to have, to hold, to cherish until death do you part? Darla says, I do. And it's a funny ending because then he says, I now pronounce you his and hers. You can go and kiss your bride now. <laughs> it's a nice laugh and they seal it with a kiss and it's a beautiful ceremony.
<laughs> now it's picture time. They're playing some good music and Mike is taking photos and they're playing a beautiful song, When I'm With You. And they are just in bliss, slowly dancing. There's some little taunts across the way saying, hey, you know, save some for the honeymoon. All right, don't get too close now. Hold up, it's just children here, hold up. But they just laugh and they're so in love and it's a beautiful sight to see. Vi's in the kitchen getting a cake ready and she's speaking with Darlene virtually. And Darlene says, oh my goodness, girl, I was so nervous. I was wondering if I would hear them say, who gives this woman away and I miss it? <laughs> girl, it's such a dark time that we're going through. And these kids, they get married. That's so amazing. Just thank you for everything. Oh girl, look, I love your cake. And Vi's just like, girl, you did an amazing job. I mean, you were right on time, right on cue and everything. And this cake, I mean, you know, making a cake is the easy part. What's difficult is keeping little fingers and hands and people trying to get a little taste of it first. <laughs> they share a little laugh. And speaking of little fingers trying to get in the cake, here comes Blue. He's trying to get a little piece. And Vi's just like, no, 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 I don't think so. Get out now. I need to prepare this cake and put this stuff on here. Just stop. I was just saying, wow, you know, he's just so smart and just so amazing. It's just, you know, every time I talk to him, he's using these big words. <laughs> Darlene is like, yeah, he is smart. I mean, he is amazing. And uh, we got to start thinking about getting him into some of the best schools in the country. I'm thinking about this school in Washington, D.C., and Vi says, Washington, that's kind of fire. I mean, he does deserve the best, but... um. Yeah. She's like, yeah. I mean, we can talk about the living arrangements. And Vi's like, okay, honey, um, we'll talk about that later. I gotta go. And Vi shuts that laptop down, okay? She shuts down that conversation because Vi knows now is not the time nor the place. Vi brings out the cake and everyone's just clapping like, oh, it's a pretty cake and everybody's happy. And Hollywood stands up because he wants to say some words. He says, you know, I love y'all. <laughs> I'm so proud of y'all. Never letting the bad tear you down, tear you apart. I mean, I can say that it's comforting for me to have that special someone, that special person to come home to. Man, may your hearts always be happy with joy because I know how that feels. That joy, that love. I just wish y'all the best and I'm happy for you. There's some cheers and some claps and everybody says cheers. Calvin in a whisper tone to Nova says, you know, do you ever see us getting married? I mean, would you ever marry me? I mean, it's good to ask you right now because I don't want to start, you know, thinking about that as a possibility if that's not how you see me in your future. And Nova says, you know, our differences bring us together. So how about we think about that together? Later on in the evening, Nova visits her mother's burial site and thanks her for being present because she knew she could feel her there. And if she could feel her there, she was sure that Ralph did too. She says, you know what, Mama, he's so happy. And some things change in this, this crazy time and... I just feel different now. And you know, I need your guidance and loving spirit. I'm gonna really need it. And she gives her mother a flower bou bouquet from the wedding. It's time to cut the cake and Ralph is trying to be all sweet and delicate. And Charlie's just like, all right, watch it with that cake. And Ralph Angel's just like, I know how to do it. Let me feed my wife. And Darla lets Ralph have it. It gives him a face full of cake. And they're laughing. And then Darla gets blue for laughing. Like, you know, you can get the cake too. They share some laughs and it's good music with Frankie Beverly and all of the nice stuff we love. They're dancing and it's just good, just beautiful vibes. Hollywood says, Vi, you all I got now. You all I got. Vi turns to him and says, 
And you're all I'll ever want. And I got you. Through it all. I got you, baby. And more dancing continues throughout the night. And that is the end of the episode. Listen, if you did not cry while watching this on television i don't i don't i don't know what's going on we need to we need to talk we need to find out what we can do to melt your ice heart because this episode was ex- just it was just gorgeous this the 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 thought of family and people coming together and working through it it showed a very big dynamic of happiness and also sadness, showing the balance of it all. Being happy for someone in your family in a certain situation, but also as tough as dealing with a loss in the family, more specifically, your mother. How hard is that? And then also at the same time, trying to keep it all together with a composure. So much on Hollywood at this time, And it was very sad to see him hurting, also feeling alone, having to drive down there, deal with the death of his mother, and then also getting things that belong to her together, getting her ashes and releasing them at the lake. Like that's a lot. You come there for some sort of closure, but you come there with confusion. There really isn't good communication with you and the medical staff because of this pandemic. So many uncertainties. As I mentioned in the last review, this pandemic has brought to light a lot of the things that need work. Our school systems, our healthcare systems, when it comes to loans, when it comes to the economy, jobs, etc., technology, so much more. It was a slap in the face for everybody into saying, what is going on? So this writing allows us to see that that's a lot when it comes to your mental health because you're dealing with 50 things at once. You know, Vi and Hollywood are dealing with, okay, our business and developing that. Now that it's kicked off, what do we do? Hollywood finally having his endeavor where where men can come and relax and talk and and him working so hard to build up to that. Him having this happiness and him having that anniversary celebration a couple of episodes before. And then you have the loss of your mom. And then you're also thinking about being there for your wife, being there for your family and also showing some happiness. That's a lot emotionally. So they did show with this writing that it takes balance and we're all trying to figure it out. We're all trying to figure out how emotionally can we cope and deal and also still connect with reality and be there. So the togetherness, showing people that, hey, we're human. All we can do is our best. All we can do is just keep living to the best of our ability. And that's what this episode showed. Not only on this wedding, Ralph Angel and Darla getting it together and going through their struggles and having such a spontaneous thought of let's get married and enjoy life. That's a lot. Um, So I really enjoyed that writing. It's a lot of triggers that people are experiencing throughout this season because they're like, oh my goodness, I forgot that I went through so much last year. You're human. We're all human. And this is really showing the dynamic from outside looking in, showing everybody that, wow, we went through a lot, right? Nova, is she okay? Um, The prayer to her mom was interesting because she's like, I need your guidance and I know you're here. Is she having conflicting thoughts, not only about her life and the direction that it's going, but she seems very confused throughout the seasons that it's been on. When she does show concerns of confusion, it's within her career. And now it seems to be some sort of conflict that really hasn't been brought to the light yet. I said that I really don't think that Nova is the monogamous type. Since this show has been on, she's been that free bird. She's she's with women, she's with men, she's by herself, she's she's this, she's that, you know. And this so-called being pushed into this family life, meeting his kids and all this other stuff. And I think she's having him to herself 
for this while has been exciting. It's this, it's this infatuation of can this be our everyday lives? But it seems to me that do you think that Nova is feeling guilty about taking it this far with Calvin? She did mention that let's, let's figure this out together. Let's let's talk about that together, which is different from a yes or a no. Calvin asked her, do you see a marriage in our future? You know, kind of let me know that now so I don't get my hopes up. She didn't say yes or no, which is basically a no. <laughs> she didn't say, you know, well, yeah, that's in my thoughts. Yeah. Or no, that's not in my thoughts. She said, well, let's figure this out together. Mm, I didn't really like that I, uh, answer because that lets me know that she's really confused and she doesn't know what she's wanted to do. She's a, she's a free spirit. And I think that maybe she's starting to feel some sort of guilt or confusion. And is she starting to feel like she's leading him on? Because she's brought up several times, you know, our differences bring us together, but it's a big concern of hers, right? Um, with her fam, his family having something to say about, her, about their relationship. She had a good interaction with the daughter, but you still have his whole family to think about. You still have society. You still have racism. All of this, these things are concerns to her. And I don't think that that's something that will mesh with her in the future. Um, I've always said that her and Calvin started all out wrong and I think they are gonna end wrong. Unfortunately, cute couple, but I don't think it's gonna work. Darlene, Darla's mother. Mmm, Miss Control, Control Freak. Um, the conversation that we had, that they had with Vi, here it is this special day for your daughter and you're talking about shipping off Blue to go to this special school. Not in his same state, but all the way somewhere else. And I could tell Vi got frustrated with that because it's just like this, this, this young boy finally has some roots, finally has family, finally has friends, finally seen this evolution of his parents and a relationship and then getting married. Why would you even suggest or bringing up taking a young boy out of that environment? It just, we see this cycle of Darlene and how she was just had too much pressure on Darla when it came to school and all this other stuff. And it probably started, it is what started that domino effect in um, Darla being an addict, unfortunately. But clearly that's something that Vi was like, we're not going to talk about this on the wedding day. We just, we just not. <laughs> Why are you thinking about that now? What's most important is that, hey, if your grandson's a genius, he's a genius. No one can take that away from him no matter where he lives, right? So clearly some foreshadowing in uh, some static that's coming between Darla and her mother. Also, I didn't think it was cool that... Um, Darlene brought up the fact, well, you know, um, he's he's a genius and he gets that from me. And, you know, it was a moment where everybody was joking, you know, when they had the little surprise, you know, virtual party. And Vi kind of threw in some funny, you know, line about, hey, well, you know, I have my PhD in common sense, you know. But it was like Darlene took that moment to kind of say, well, you know, am I schooling and got it from me and all this other stuff. It was just kind of like, mm, but I see how Vi kind of pushes away her comments, but it's only so long that Vi is going to continue to kind of like sway off her comments and you're getting annoying. So static coming soon, major, 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 major foreshadowing. Also, Darla, she looks up to Charlie so much. And I think the reason why she looks up to Charlie so much is that she sees herself in Charlie. Darla knows that she has the potential to be, if not equivalent or greater than Charlie. She's a very smart girl. She started off going to school and, 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 and had this rocket ship to greatness in her career. Um, but unfortunately, she got sidetracked with a lot of things, with her being an addict, with depression, with all this other stuff. And she looks up to Charlie because I honestly think that she sees herself. She sees that this, this is me. I have the potential to be like Charlie or even better. So I just look forward to that. Let me know your thoughts. This episode was, I honestly think, just showing the balance of emotions and also that it's okay to have happiness and think about happiness when things around you seem to be going 
you know, not so great, you know, and, and, and sad and depressing, but just sharing that message that you can be happy for somebody else. You can have enjoyable moments and you don't have to feel guilty or egotistical for feeling that way and wanting to feel that way. So let me know your thoughts. Subscribe. Don't forget you get to click the notification bell so you don't miss any post. And look at Delilah which is a mystery lawyer show it's 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 all of these great things make sure that you check out that playlist let me know how you enjoy that and until next time i'll see you guys next week for the next episode stay tuned until then take care of yourself and each other